Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. We're continuing on our series of engineering economics videos, and we're going to do a really simple, quick video for you here, but it's something important because this is usually the first half of what the first half of the course is dedicated to, which is figuring out cash flow diagrams and finding present and future values. So in this video, we're going to make a video on annuities, or what are also known as equal payment series. In, in the previous video, when we did F given P, so the future value given the present, or present given the future, in those video, in, in those techniques, what we could do is if we had a bunch of payments in, for example, five or six years in the future, each year we had a different payment or even the same payment, what we could do is we could take those as the sum of the individual payments at some year. But when we have an annuity or we have a bunch of payments that are the same, we can just use one formula and it makes it a lot easier. Let's take a look at this question and uh, I just put a piece of paper here and then we'll, I'll show you the, um, the cash flow. But a lot of the times in these questions, what's going to happen is you're going to be given the word problem but not the cash flow diagram and that's actually the trickiest part. So let's try and draw the cash flow diagram and then we'll just do the question because it's actually really easy after that. Suppose you make annual contributions of $3,000 at the end of each year to your savings account. If you earn 7% annually, how much can be withdrawn at the end of year 10? Okay, cool. So um, right off the bat, we know that uh, we're making $3,000 annual payments. So all the payments in 10 years are the same. Okay, so we know now that we have an annuity or an equal payment series, so that's like the first hint. We're given i equals 7%, okay? And we're given the end of each year are, are the payments. So that's also important because uh, the cash flow diagram will look a little bit different. It'll move one year back if they're at the start of the year. Okay, so now if we take a look at the uh, formula, not, not the formula, but the little diagram for F given A, so we're trying to find the future value of a series of equal payments at $3,000 per year. It looks something like this. So we start as year zero, there's no payment. So then this will be N minus one. And then we have year N, which is the last year, okay? So what happens is there's no payment in year one, and there's a bunch of equal payments all the way up to n minus one, and then n, which is our final year, okay, we also have a payment, but then we have the future value f at that, at that year n. So um, with that being kind of uh, shown here, and th this is for end of year payments, by the way, we can start to draw our cash flow diagram for this problem, okay, mimicking this because it does fit the end of year payment schedule that um, is derived in the tables in the book. So we have z year zero, okay, Okay, where our n is 10, so we have 10 years, right? So n is here, n minus one would correspond to nine. Okay, so we have, uh, we start at zero, and at year one, we start making our equal payments. Okay, and these are all $3,000. Okay, these are all 3,000. Instead of writing it for each one, I'll just write it on the bottom, a equals 3,000. And then at year n, okay, we get the future value. Okay, so this is at year n, I'll just put that in the middle. And that's our F, okay? So uh, we have our F here, we're at year zero, and we wanna find that, cool. So um, I, as you can see, I wrote this out a little neater, and this is what we just went through, okay? So we have 10 years of equal payments, and then at the end, we have a payment, and we have our F value, where I equals seven. So let's go ahead and let's go to the interest table, and let's find our factors. So let's write out what we have first. We have our A, which is our equal series payment, that's equal to 3,000. Our I is equal to 7%. Okay, and our n is equal to 10. We have 10 payments at end of year, okay? And uh, what else do we need? Well, we need the interest factor now. So let's go to the 7% table. So bring up your table, go to 7%, okay? And we're gonna go look for the compound amount factor. So F given A, I, N, right? Because we're looking for the future value. Let's go down to our number of periods. So in our case, our number of periods is 10. And uh, we can go ahead and get the interest factor of F given A, 7% 10 is equal to 13.8164, okay? So now that we have the interest factor, all we need to do is multiply that by our A, and that should give us our F. So we can say that F is equal to 3,000 times 13.8164, okay? And that's equal to, okay, we have 41,449.2 dollars. And that's the answer. So if we contribute $3,000 to this savings account and it's compounded every year at 7% annually, uh, what can be withdrawn at year 10? And the answer to that is $41,449.20. So I, uh, I hope you guys learned something there. Really, really simple video, but uh, you'll see this 
annuity come up all throughout the course. So, you know, make sure you understand it, know how to get the present value, know how to get the future value at any at any point. And uh, it'll definitely help you out. And thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe.